Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be checking out the King Kong Fly Egg 130 and you're probably thinking why is Andy checking that model out? It's a little bit old now and you'd be correct. However, it's one of these models that is in the pretty exclusive 2.8 inch propeller club. There's only a few models that have this propeller so the Leader 120 which is one of my favourite models of the year. Uh, I think they did the 110 GT also ran this and I think they do a 136 mil model as well from King Kong or LDARC who they are now known as. So what I really like about this class of model is it's running two inch components pretty much but because of this propeller we are able to get a three inch kind of model you know 2.8 inches it's it's almost there but we're able to run a much lighter setup because of that so this is actually coming in at 99 grams which is really light for a almost three inch size model however i do think this kind of model will be phased out in 2018 because we now have these models that have the micro CCD camera. This isn't one of those. It has got a CMOS camera and it also doesn't have an on-screen display. And King Kong have always been a bit behind with that. But it does have your basic features such as a buzzer, which is actually underneath here now. So the VBAT does feed through to the flight controller, which means that you can set up this buzzer as a voltage warning, which is all you really need. You don't need fancy on-screen displays, it's just that we're spoiled that we can have that these days. The motors are a 1105-7500 kV brushless motor, and it's using a 10 amp ESC board. I think it is capable of D-Shot, but because the flight control is a Pico BLX, you have to do a lot of messing around to get D-Shot working. So we're pretty much stuck with multi-shot here and choosing an old version of Beta Flight by today's standards. Of course, you can upgrade that. It's no problem there. If you want to upgrade it, that'll be the FF Pico BLX. I think at 3.17, it changed to that from your normal Pico BLX. What I do like about this is it's soft mounted, so that's quite nice. And we've got the usual switching 16 channel VTX, kind of. You have to solder a jumper to get it to 25 milliwatt. It's 100 milliwatt out of the box, so I'm keeping it as that. And it's got your two LEDs and you get given a chart to tell you what channel that it's on. Sleeve dipole antenna, and we actually have some LEDs on the back here which is connected to the DIN and is configured to have like indicators and things like that. The frame is pretty nice, fairly thick, fairly sturdy and this is the XM version which is a little bit temperamental in fact they give you a warning in the box to say that there's some firmwares out there that means that the XM loses the bind. I haven't found that to be the case with this one yeah, so it's a little bit hit and miss with the XM receivers there. It did come with a warning on the battery connector, which is just a balance port. It said just to use a 2S battery, and they've switched from the JST to this connector to stop you using a 3S battery, which is fair enough. I just wish these wires were thicker than this, though. Because, you know, with these props, it's going to be heavy on amps, so we need thick wires, and they haven't given us that. The battery, I'm a little bit disappointed in as well, because it's just 35C, 350 milliamp. I don't think that is going to be enough, even with the fact that we haven't got an on-screen display running. These props, very amp heavy. I'm going to try it anyways on this battery, but I'm a little bit skeptical. So, other than that, we have the CMOS camera up the front there and then we have this nice metal cage which makes it nice and sturdy sadly not enough room to put a micro swift and i think that would have been a great option for this especially one with the on-screen display but there you go stuck with the stock camera but in general king kong usually a pretty safe bet to go with like i say only things i'm concerned about is 
the battery. So we have the usual King Kong tub. And sadly, this one doesn't fit in the tub with the props on. I think they've listened to that with their ET series because they've given a bigger box. Now, yep, so you have to install the props. You're given these screws in. You need, I think it's 1.5 mil hex driver to get these on there. So we've got the usual manual that's in Chinese on one side and English in the other. It tells you the beta flight setup. Very easy to set up, something I like about King Kong here. Of course you still do have to, you know, bind it and set things up there. But yeah, it tells you the chart and you can see the solder jumper you have to do there to change the power output. We've got a schematic here of the Pico BLX, which is nice. And some beta flight setup there, but it's really best to do your research on beta flight setup. We've got some motor protectors here and some longer screws and we've got some prop protectors here as well so yeah you could actually fly this one indoors but a little bit big for an indoor model it's nice that you've got that option again i really wish they come up with a better option than unscrewing all these motors to get these on i just love them to clip on there so you get a spare set of props. They are the white props then. They're a different material than this translucent material. I tend to find that these aren't as strong and they break easier. We've got the XM manual there as well. And then we've got two spare of these rubber bands. But if this snapped, it'd be very difficult to put a new one on because they've built it over the top of this. Something that's always a bit of a pain with King Kong models. We've got the prop remover and then we've got a sticky back channel chart if you want to stick that somewhere maybe on your goggles. But that is pretty much everything you get in the tub. So I have set this up on my Tyrannus. I've got the Orcs 1 to arm, the Orcs 2 as Angle, Horizon, Acro and Air. So I think this one's flashed with version 3.16. So I don't think there's the option for anti-gravity or dynamic filtering. So you might want to upgrade to 3.2 for that. But there is air mode on there. And of course, I have got the AUX3 set up for a beeper. The PIDs were absolutely miles out. They were like in the 20s and they're just not going to work. So I'm going to put my own PIDs on there. And if it flies nicely, then... I'll give you the PIDs. I'm pretty used to getting nice PIDs now for this size of model, such as I did with the Leader 120, so that shouldn't be too difficult. I am very concerned about the battery, though, and I am going to take a guess here before the flight that I'm probably going to need to change the battery to one that's a higher C. This is a Ishin 80C battery, but we'll see how it performs. As for FPV, I'm going to be using my usual Fat Shark Dominate HD3s. We've got the Menace Bandicoot antenna for the linear antenna here, and then a Omway Cloverleaf antenna, Real ACC Pro Plus Diversity that's faulty, but if I sort of hold it in a certain place, then it works okay. So I'll see how I get on with that. But let's go and take it for a fly. Okay, let's go for the line of sight. First of all, starting off with the stock battery. And hopefully there's enough power there for it to fly. Just listen how quiet this thing is. Amazing. That's something I love about this prop. So quiet. Okay, let's go for a punch on the stock battery. And look at that. Straight into a flip of death and you hear the beep. That is the ESC resetting. Uh, lovely amount of mud there so that is just really confirming what I thought that the stock battery isn't going to be enough shame that wonder what happens if I try a punch with a slower throttle 
Yeah, can you hear there? That wasn't even full throttle. And the beep are going off at the top of the throttle. So, confirming to me, stock battery just not good enough, I'm afraid. Try a bit of echo, but it's just buzzing there. Not even at the top of the throttle that it's doing that. About 75% throttle. So, they should have given a better battery with this and now it's covered in mud. <laughs> yeah, okay. We don't seem to have any drift in angle mode, that's a good thing, but that battery not up to scratch. Let's try one with a higher C. Okay, this is 450 milliamp ATC. Now, we still might hear the buzzer going off at the top. Nope, look at that. Didn't even go off. I've had to set the voltage warning lower because it's the only indication I've got of the battery getting low. There we go, can you hear it going off there, but no flip of death this time. Let's try acro. That is much better. Why would they not give an adequate battery for this? I mean, battery is my borderline a disposable part of copters these days, but you know, if you're buying this to have fun straight out of the box, that is not the case. But wow, it's got the power now. I don't think it's quite as much power as the Leader 120, but it's not, it's not far off at all. Yeah, can you hear the beeper going off there? That's just something that I'm gonna have to put up with because it is going to tell me when the battery's getting low when doing FPV. Flat calm here for once, very nice. Now I could see why they've used that little connector on the back to start using a 3S, but I still think the wires could be thicker. Definitely has some cause for you know this beeper going off here and the flip of death on the stock battery you can see as well as the battery starts to deplete the beeper going off more oh it flies nice though I have to say Yeah, much better with a better battery. But still heavy on the amps, this model. Those big props. You would do better fitting a bigger connector. XT30. Definitely. But no more flips of death. Well, at least until the battery gets extremely low, and I imagine you would get that. Okay, beeper is going off now. It reminds me of when they landed on the moon. <laughs> that kind of beep. Right, let's go in for a landing. I've got a proper battery on there, and let's do some FPV. So I would say to keep an eye on the price of these models that are rocking the CMOS cameras because, well, there's an abundance of them, first of all, because it's all that we have pretty much had. And now that we have these CCD cameras that have come out, it's going to be the standard and I think that is going to greatly reduce the price of all of these models that have the CMOS camera on there and they're totally usable look at this it's a dull day and the picture's nice and clear it's a pretty good CMOS camera on this one and video reception on these King Kong models is fantastic that's because it's 
putting out there 100 milliwatt, so it's stronger than the 25 milliwatt all-in-one cameras. It's not an all-in-one camera, this one. It is a separate camera to the VTX, and usually 10 to find, as I nearly did a crash there, that the cameras that aren't all-in-one but are CMOS are a little bit better. I was trying to do an inverted jaw spinner. I did one there. My flying skills have depleted because I haven't flown for a week. This is the first time I've flown since we had all that snow. Still got the uh, big snowball at the end of the field there. I actually did a flight with the Ascent three inch around that that was a lot of fun but yeah about a week later so the flight time with this one about three minutes i'll overlay my pids here because i felt like i got a really good tune out of it it flew superb i absolutely love this prop on this size model it's just so floaty and just so accurate and smooth very easy to tune with this prop heavy on the amps but it's fine, it's manageable. You can get a decent flight time. I think three minutes is fine. And again, very similar performance to the Leader 120. I think the Leader 120 has more performance than this one, I think, maybe because it might be a little bit lighter. Downside, of course, the battery. There's no excuses for that. I mean, you know, if you're gonna provide a battery for a copter, it needs to be one that will actually let it fly and this one just won't so you need to upgrade the battery a small thing i would say but yeah other than that it's a fairly good model i like it i, I love the video reception there's hardly any breakup you have to bear in mind i'm using a diversity module and the bandicoot i know i keep saying this but the bandicoot linear antenna from menace is a must for these models and I'm pretty much seeing all of these micro models coming out with whip antennas. In fact, the bigger models I think are going back to them just because we have better quality VTXs now and antennas. But there you go, that is my review of the King Kong Fly Egg 130. I'll put a link in the description if you wish to get one. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.